you're back with the Notebook Check Tech Review Channel, and today we've got uh, one of the lowest cost, if not the lowest cost, Windows 10 product on the market. It's the Microsoft Lumia 550. It's the low end version or the low end of the new Windows 10 mobile range. Of course, there is a massive gap between this and the Lumia 950 that we reviewed uh, not so long ago. 100 euros. Let's see what it can do. What we've done is we've done the review at notebookcheck.net. You'll see that, we've got that here. And uh, I'm gonna give you some details from the performance test. I'm also gonna give you my uh, opinions and we'll go over some of the pros and cons from our test review as well. They'll be at the end of the video. So if you wanna fast forward, feel free. Don't forget to give us a, a like and don't forget to subscribe to the videos if you wanna see more of these. Well, first off, you can see our score there, 79%. That's a good score. It's not in a very good range in terms of uh, local smartphones, but it's a reasonable score there. This smartphone, good for some things and not for others. If you think about gaming, for example, if you think about 1080p video recording, you can probably forget that with this phone. But you do get a lot with it. It's an LTE phone. It's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon quad-core processor inside, a reasonable camera uh, for the price, and we've also got uh, GPS inside as well. So, and, um, of course, at 99 euros, you can use this as a hotspot, which turns it, it turns out to be quite a cheap LTE hotspot if you're looking for that sort of thing. I'll give you some details on the battery life, but let's first just go through some more of those specifications. Only one gigs of RAM in this, so there's a limit. Eight gigs of flash, so there's a limit there. Only 3.14 gigs free at the end of the day. You do get a micro SD card slot, and it's a single nano SIM uh, slot inside as well. Removable battery is quite an advantage. No AC Wi-Fi, but as you can see there, we do get LTE support. It's an 8 watt hour battery, so a little bit above those old 5 watt batteries that we seem to have been stuck on uh, up until about three years ago when we started to move up into bigger screens that could take bigger batteries. The last smartphone we tested with the Huawei, Huawei Mate 8, which had a massive 10 watt hour battery. This has got an 8 watt hour battery, so that's not too bad in terms of uh, battery size. We'll give you some battery uh, performance results at the end of this uh, video though. Taking a look around the device then, we've got that 4.7 inch uh, screen. It's screen, it's only a 720p screen, sort of hard polycarbonate uh, fitting there. We've got the uh, headset uh, slot, headset uh, port on the top, no separate uh, camera release button on the outside, volume and power there. And then on the bottom, a USB-C, uh, sorry, a USB 2 micro USB port. On the back there, there's a reasonably loud uh, my, uh, speaker, quality and the dynamic range on that actually not that fantastic but it's reasonable for a little back bit of background youtubing for example there's that five megapixel or autofocus camera with a single led flash i'll give you some details on the uh, photos later back comes off pretty easily there's the removable battery micro sd card slot and the nano slim sim slot there there's a blanked off slot there so obviously there's uh, dual sim versions of these around there's a, a little size uh, and weight picture for you, the Lumia 550, 142 grams. Let's look, put the 535 in there, slightly bigger and slightly heavier than the 535. Putting the Samsung Galaxy J1 in there, that's also a little bit smaller than the Lumia 550. It's really difficult to talk about Windows 10 on this device. Updates are coming in uh, regularly for the uh, OS. Uh, in my experience, over a couple of days, fairly stable on the UI, but uh, just the same sort of problems that you even get on the uh, uh, Lumia 830 that I've had personally for about a year now, and things like uh, sharing photos and having the application that you're sharing to crash shortly after uh, aren't very uh, encouraging. Um, in general, I would say it is probably eight out of 10 in terms of uh, software here. But the big problem is, of course, your apps. There's no um, Snapchat app, there's no Periscope app. And if you're into Internet of Things, smartwatches, for example, you forget, can forget any sort of connectivity to those unless you're talking about the, the Microsoft Band and Band 2. So there are definitely limits to the uh, software. Um, we're always saying that it's possible the apps might come. It's been a long time since Windows 10 has been launched now, and a lot of the apps still aren't there. A lot of the apps are fairly basic, and a lot of the apps haven't been updated for a long time. 
So bear that in mind. It's got a basic set of apps if you're into Twitter, Facebook, photo sharing on those platforms, Instagram, uh, your maps. Uh, certainly here Drive is a, is a nice advantage and those offline maps are available for, for almost every country. So that's quite a nice uh, advantage there. There's no compass inside this, but the GPS seems to be fairly accurate in our test. You can look at the review for some more details about our test against the Garmin, Gar our reference Garmin Edge 500. So don't expect too much from the uh, camera. We have got some uh, test pictures available uh, for you on the website. Um, my personal opinion is this is sort of just about acceptable for uh, most people, certainly for younger people that aren't really into the uh, high-end smartphones and high-tech high cam uh, camera technology. This is good enough. Certainly I had some fun over the weekend taking pictures of cats and people. And uh, if we take a quick look at some of these photos and uh, I'll try and make these available with links on the YouTube video. Uh, where are we? For example, some of these pictures aren't too bad even when, when zoomed in. The trick here is that you need a good bit of light. You also need a good bit of um, knowledge about the UI, switching to manual mode, fixing the focus, for example, can help uh, setting the white balance. If you leave everything on automatic, it does take a little while to get focus and takes a little while to get the white balance correct. Uh, so if you're gonna use this for any sort of semi serious, maybe social networking photography, then make sure you're familiar with the manual settings. Video 720p, no optical image stabilization, but the digital stabilization actually seemed pretty good in my twist, tests. But remember, only 720p videos on this. More details on the website. We've got uh, color charts and uh, test charts available for you there. So don't forget to check that out if you're interested in the camera on the Lumia 550. So the keyboard isn't too bad. Uh, certainly in portrait mode, uh, quite uh, useful. And uh, there's also a little uh, joystick there that allows you to fine tune the position of the cursor. And that's actually pretty handy. In portrait mode, I personally found it a little bit small. Maybe it's because I'm used to bigger, um, bigger phones now, but you can certainly reach each side of the uh, uh, system. And if you do a long press on the, uh, a long press on the uh, start button, you get into one-handed mode there. Let's take a look at the screen now. You can see our measurements there on brightness. 536 center brightness is actually a pretty good. Drops off a little bit uh, um, around the edges. Not too much though. And the contrast, 865 to 1. Not huge in terms of contrast. A contrast over 1,000 would be pretty good. But that's the sort of thing we're expecting from phones of 300 and up. Now the color accuracy, 5.81 uh, on the colors. That's that there. And the grayscale is 7.72, not brilliant, uh, but not too far off, not too far out of an, sort of an acceptable range, certainly for a $100 smartphone. There's a comparison uh, for you for some similar devices. The Samsung Galaxy J1 is in there with a lower brightness and a lower uh, color accuracy. Uh, we've got uh, higher contrast on that Xperia E4G. This is uh, 2,181 on that. Um, the brightness 458, black levels down at 0 0.21. So that's a nice contrasty screen. Take a look for more details though on the website. There's also some commentary from our reviewer. Lots of performance test results for you on the website. And Tutu, for example, 25,812. I want to go to jet screen, Jetstream. We've actually switched from using Sun Spider test now. We're onto Jetstream, and that's scoring 13,006. Let me see if I can get you the um, Octane V2 scores so there's something to compare it with. Uh, 2,170. Doesn't really keep up with the Xperia E4G at 3,399. GFX bench, uh, three frames per second on the uh, T-Rex HD off-screen test. And I can tell you, if you're looking at some of the high-end games, the store games, for example, uh, Drift Street uh, Outlaws, that's something I tested, really poor frame rate on that. Wordament, you'll get away with that, uh, but uh, don't expect the high-end store games to be uh, very, very advanced. 
Right then, thermals, uh, 45.3 uh, top left there, not too much. I did notice when I was charging it, a little bit of heating up there, but that's only under charging, so not too bad on the temperatures. Speaker, there's some details there. It's a reasonably powerful speaker, but the quality is very poor. Now, battery runtime, this is the important bit. Wi-Fi surfing, uh, V1.3 test, seven hours and 25 minutes, isn't too ba bad. Big Buck Bunny. 1080p at 100 nits, 150 nits, sorry, six hours, 56 minutes. Well, it's a small screen and only 720p, so you'd expect a reasonable score. That's coming in at slightly under some of the other devices there. Let's take the uh, Xperia E4G, for example, uh, on the H264 test getting 528 points. So uh, it's about average amongst the uh, low-end uh, smartphones there. Um, although don't expect this to be the, the longest battery life smartphone you've ever had. If you just jumped through to the uh, summary and the pros and cons, uh, you're welcome. Don't forget to uh, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want more of these videos from Notebook Check. Uh, next up will be a very, very big gaming laptop costing around 3,700 euros. You can buy 37, or maybe 40 of these for the cost of the laptop that I'm going to be putting on the table next. And if you're a gamer, don't forget to subscribe. You'll get notifications of the testing of this massive MSI laptop that I'm going to do next. Pros and cons then. Well, low price, 100 euros. Now, if we think about uh, the UK, where these are basically available in supermarkets and heavily discounted, I've seen them for 75 pounds. It's something you can drop into a trolley with a fair bit of confidence. So you're gonna get a good value product out when you pay for it. Now, we've got the removable battery, the swappable covers. You can have swappable covers on this. Good photos, that's good. That's sort of three quarters of the uh, value of a good quality smartphone and maybe half the quality of a high-end smartphone. And we're talking good, and social media sharing photos here. 720p screen is good. There's a fair bit, of, uh, fair bit of brightness. Colors aren't too out as well. Suitable battery life for everyday use. And don't forget, this is Windows Phone. You won't actually be loading this up with too many apps, so you won't be killing the battery life um, like you could do potentially on Android if you start getting silly with loading apps on that. On the cons, well, I don't know if I can show you that very quickly, but there's a pressure sensitive uh, screen there a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, um, yeah color change on pressing under pressure and um, there was some bleeding at the top I noticed of the screen as well charging times are long and in some cases uh, high power consumption the software Windows 10 not only is it not completely stable but it's just missing some key apps and this is going to be a massive problem going forward uh, we have talked about this and everyone has talked about this time and time again we need the apps for windows 10 to really complete this operating system front camera low resolution selfies well that's not really the forte for the lumia 550. florian women was our uh, reviewer on this he scored it 79 percent there's the breakdown of the scores if you are interested in the lumia 550 you want to know a little bit more about it you've got some ideas of how you're going to use your phone in your head just take a look at those scores. Uh, if you're not worried about the weight, for example, take that out of the figure. Connectivity, well, if you, if you don't need USB 3, you don't need to worry about that. If you don't need NFC, if you don't need a compass, not too much of a problem on that 60% score there. This does has, have LTE for 100 euros, which is uh, pretty significant. Audio, yeah, again, the speakers are pretty poor, but that might not be in, uh, important for you. I've actually connected this up to Bluetooth speakers, had no problems getting a decent sound out of a decent Bluetooth speaker with this. So who's this targeted at, targeted at? Well, young children maybe. Of course, you've got the family safety modes on this, the family safety accounts, which could be quite nice. Um, it does seem to be a fairly rugged phone. I have already dropped it once. No scratches on the back, no scratches on the front. You can change those color, covers fairly easily. Um, and it's fairly decently sized as well. This is not a, uh, an oversized phone. It's very handleable. I got on with it for two days without any issues. I think the UI speed is quite fast. And I uh, use the Lumia 830 every day. You do notice this is a little bit slower. You do notice that the camera is much worse than the Lumia 830. I miss that optical image stabilization. But the 830 is a phone that costs 270 euros. That's two and a half times as much as this. And it's not 
two and a half times as good. I think as an entry level, if you're really interested in, in Windows and doing maybe some uh, work with your uh, Word files, your Excel files on, on the go, if you want an LTE hotspot for 99 euros, uh, that's something to consider as well. And also think about the discounting that's going to go on on this and the fact that you can really just pick this up in, for example, any supermarket in the UK is going to have this uh, on the shelves. You better drop it into your shopping cart, take it with you. So the 550, 79%, not, the t not a top end score here for this budget phone, but a reasonable entry level for the Lumia. If they fix Windows 10 issues, if we get some more apps in there, and that, then that could improve this over time. But let's see. So thank you for watching. As I said, I've got a gaming laptop coming up next on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. You'll get email notification as soon as I've got that video done. It will be a couple of days because I also need to get some gaming video demos ready for you. Uh, and that's something that I personally will need some time to finish. But uh, do stay tuned for that. We've also got uh, another Toshiba satellite coming in, the C50, I believe. There's a Yoga 3 on the way and a few other devices uh, also with reviewers and then being sent to me here in Bonn. Thanks to Coworking Bond for uh, letting us use this uh, space. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And help us bring more of these videos to you on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.